In this video, we will be discussing the drivetrain vibrations that this Volvo had when I first bought it. Those that follow on Instagram will remember in February that this was a problem this car had. I'm going to go through what I did to fix this problem. For a better visual, I'm going to show where the driveline components that were changed are located from the outside of the car before we go over the specifics. We're going to start with the front of the car. So you can see roughly where I've put these. These aren't exact locations, but the front CV joint is after the angle gear. So this is all for the main drive shaft on the all wheel drive going to the back. So here we are at the front wheel. The lighting's not very good. It'll be more clear on the table, but that's one of the CV joints that was changed. There wasn't really a problem with this on this car. In the midsection of the car, we have the main drive shaft U joint, which was the problem on this car. And towards the rear wheel, we have another CV joint, which is the same as the front one. Volvo advertises it to be different and not replaceable, but I can assure you it is replaceable and it is the same part number as the CV joint in the front. This also didn't have a problem but it was changed due to the fact that other people have claimed CV joints have been problems for drive shaft vibrations. Let's begin with the actual symptoms that the car had. So in second and third gear under load only, it made a mechanical whirring sound from the gearbox area. Sometimes it sounded like it was coming from the passenger side, but that was occasional. We'll get to the CV axles afterwards, but this was the main place that the sound comes from. Mechanical whirring sound is the best I can describe it. I had a clip of the car driving when it had the problem, but the microphone can't pick it up. So unless you had a recorder underneath the car, there's no way that I can show this in the video. When I first started looking into this problem, I looked at the forums and all of my searches for the sound led to either Sweet Speed or one of the forums that had a person with a V50 S40 T5 all wheel drive manual. But I think it was an 08 model with the hydraulic transmission mount. And that was the problem in that case. So I ended up changing that transmission mount as the first point, which you'll see in a clip earlier from February. And that did not solve the problem, but we'll get more in depth than that. After that didn't solve the problem, I checked the other engine mounts, which are at the front right, which you'll see in the following clip here. The engine mount on the bottom of the car, which is normal functioning mode, as you will see in this clip here. And then I went to the outer passenger side axle on the front. It could be the carrier bearing or the axle itself that's going bad. I ended up buying a GKN axle, putting it in, and it did not solve the problem. So I returned the axle. So don't necessarily jump to axles when they say it's bad. Try the motor mounts, the axle, think about them and the problems that this car has had and go from there. But troubleshooting this is tricky. In this clip, I'll show me shaking the front driver's side axle. And this is the one that's currently in the car. It's the original one. And there's nothing wrong with it, even with this much movement and play. The other side had the same amount. I just didn't get it on video. So a lot of shops will say that you should change this, but there's nothing wrong with these axles with this amount of play. After this, I spoke to some S40 and V50 owners that had had drive shaft problems. Some people just remove the drive shaft and make the car front wheel drive. 
But one person that had successfully tackled this job said they changed the CV joints in the main drive shaft, which we'll go into more detail, and that solved the problem. In my case, once I got the drive shaft out, I'll briefly go over what I did. There are videos of people removing all wheel drive Volvo drive shaft, so you can use that for more detail. But I bought a Milwaukee Impact and I used that to get the bolts out from the drive shaft because they were really rusted in there. I had to use heat and lots of penetrant. I had to drop the exhaust before that. I did return the impact, but what happened was once I got the drive shaft out and I put it in a vise, the U-joint in the center would not allow motion. So that means that the actual U-joint in the center of the center drive shaft was the problem. I had already ordered the CV joints and then with great difficulty I sourced the U-joint once I had gotten it out with a mixture of heat and penetrating fluid because Volvo claims that that U-joint is not replaceable. But it's not like Honda CRV and Toyota RAV4 center drive shafts which actually don't have a replaceable U-joint. Volvo doesn't provide the U-joint, but if you take it out and you source it at a place that sells U-joints, you can replace it on these drive shafts. We will go more in depth on exactly what to look for on the U-joint once you get it out. And the movement in the vise, unfortunately I did this job earlier in the summer and it was very tricky so I didn't have time to film it. I only have one clip showing the part number for the CV joints which I will include. These are the CV joints for the main drive shaft that runs to the back for the all wheel drive. The part number is the same for both. Volvo themselves say that only the front one is changeable but you can change both of them with the same part number. Here are the items that come in each kit. And these CV joints are not for the front or rear axles themselves. They are for the front and rear of the main center drive shaft. Once I got the new U-joint in and I changed the CV joints, this car has no problems in acceleration. The all-wheel drive works perfectly fine and there is no more whirring noise. So you don't necessarily have bad axles. If it's a front wheel drive V50 or S40 or any other P1 or P2 Volvo, your axles are go-tos, but axles usually manifest themselves over time and you'll hear them clicking when you turn, reverse. They will most likely show something further. So I drove this car for about a month with that problem once I finally got it on the road. I did long trips with it, not that it was a good idea, but it was fine. It didn't cause any major damage, thankfully. I don't recommend you do that. But if you do think it's one of the axles, wait and see if the problem progresses a bit more, be it clicking, be it turning, whatever sounds that it makes before you go and buy the axles, because that was a bit annoying to pull the axle, put it back, put back the old original one, and then move on to the drive shaft. So take some time, but don't necessarily do everything that they say on the forums because it took me a lot of steps. But these are things to keep in mind when buying these older all-wheel drive Volvos. If you don't have the resources or the time, you may as well just buy a front-wheel drive one of these because it will be much easier for you to maintain and troubleshoot drivetrain issues. But if you need all-wheel drive or you like it, then go for it and be ready to tackle things like this in the case that they do occur on your car. Let's go over the related parts on the table more in depth now. This here is the upper transmission mount. Sometimes people call it an engine mount. There is a good write-up, I think, on Sweet Speed for this. So if you just Google it, you can figure it out. The only thing I would say is have a good amount of extensions because some of the related bolts do require long extensions. This is the part that I initially thought was wrong because of the forum post that I had read. Although the early S40 and V50s have these rubber mounts. They don't have the hydraulic mounts that came in the later models. These are prone to cracks. The engine mounts on all 2000s Volvos are known to be bad. But the one that goes bad the most was actually replaced on this car before I bought it. And there was nothing wrong on that. This is the one near the coolant reservoir. So this engine mount here, I'll zoom in on it a bit more. It has some cracks, but it was not the problem in this case. And as you can see on the tag, it's actually from 2006, meaning it's the original engine mount. 
This piece was a bit tricky to replace and I had already bought the part from Volvo, so I did not take this one out. The axle I did return because it was not the problem, but this piece is new on the car. Looking inside, you can see some minor cracks in the center. Also along this outer edge, you can see some cracks. It was good that this was replaced, but even in this condition, it was doing its job. Here is the part number. This mount is the lower engine mount, and although the one on this car is most likely original, as you saw in the clip due to the rust on it, it was still functioning just fine. I had purchased this mount as well to change in my process, but I got to the sense that it would be the main drive shaft earlier, so I never changed this part, but I will do a DIY in the future changing this, even though the car doesn't need it. Even on a new aftermarket one, you can see here the amount of play that it has. I do recommend going OEM with these parts, but if you do go aftermarket, this is the one I bought. So once we do a DIY on this and I drive for it for a while, you can see if you can save a few bucks by using this one. Now we're going to move on to the CV joints from the main drive shaft front to rear and the U joint that I took out on the two rags. The CV joints were the same part number as I mentioned earlier and they both fit perfectly and are working. There's nothing that I can tell wrong with these old ones. Here is the other one, the roller balls and the snap rings in the cap just came out of the main CV joint, so you don't need to worry about that. Now on to the main source of all the problems, which was this little U-joint in the center drive shaft. The drive shaft would not twist in a vise. So once this was finally removed, one of the trunnion joints, which is the one at the top there that I've zoomed in on, was seized a lot. The one on the bottom was seized a little bit, but you can see that even after a lot of penetrating oil and heat, this one is what was seized in there and not allowing this U-joint to have its proper function. Once I sourced this and changed it, all problems were gone. So here's a better look at the other sides. You see how clean they are? Here's the other one and the top one was very nasty. I wish I had the clip of the drive shaft in a vise not turning, but I did this in the summer and I had to get the car on the road properly. So that unfortunately is not part of the video, but that's what you would need to do. Get the drive shaft out, put it in a vise and see if it turns or if it doesn't. If it does turn, your problem might actually be the CV joints on the rags there, the front and the rear. Because like I said, other people who've done this job that I've spoken to and have shown me pictures of what they've done have said that just replacing the CV joints solved their problem. So your problem may not necessarily be the U-joint. I also don't want to take the axles out of the equation. Your axles may be the problem in the front. The rears, there's a very low chance, but the amount of movement front axles go through, you could have a problem, but really wait for it to develop before you decide to go with the axles. Or if you're doing a full restoration, just change the front axles. And if you have the money to keep them in the car, just keep them and it's another part that you know you've replaced. But be aware that the OEM Volvo ones are very expensive, around 1200 dollars each Canadian and the GKN axles are the best of the different brands that you can buy so if you're going to do that in the four five hundred dollar range get those axles because other ones can give you problems and these drivetrain components on 2000s Volvos all-wheel drives are one of the reasons that people shy away from buying these because the diagnosis can take a while this problem was fixed by me after many many months of research and trying different things so even if you take it to a shop because I did try to take it to different shops for diagnosis experienced shops and they made mistakes as well so don't necessarily take the word of a shop put the time into it and you can get it fixed mm -hmm.